In this exercise, we're going to discuss editing constraints. To edit a constraint, it's as easy as editing a feature. We can come over here, just click on the constraint, and you'll notice down here it highlights it. Type in a measurement. Bring that down. I can come up here to this measurement here, and I can play around with it and get it to whatever I want it to be. If I double click on the actual icon there, it'll bring up the exact same thing basically. That's what I'm doing over here in the bottom. See down here, I'm editing it. I can right click on it. If I double click on in here on the word, it'll actually say, hey, do you want to edit this? This time I don't. Right click and say edit. It'll actually let me reselect things. So you'll notice that this face is blue, blue, green, green. So if I wanted to, I could actually constrain this down here to this. So this face is now constrained to this face. If I did that by accident, say, well, wait a minute. I really want it to be up here. So now I can constrain it up here. Say, okay. And you can see now it's locked down. It's not gonna move as wiggly worm as it did before. It'll still move, which it has degrees of freedom to move for. If you look at that but it's not gonna move nearly as much because I've reduced those down from my constraints. If I just wanted to remove the constraint altogether, I could just right click and say delete. It's gonna just move freely. I could also right click and temporarily ground it so that it doesn't move around at all. So it doesn't go crazy on me. I can unground it. But we wanna use our browser as much as possible and decide what we wanna edit. And then just come in here and tweak it a little bit. See there, I like that. This part here, maybe I don't want that angle to be so steep. Negative 30. You'll notice there's a lot of negatives with these angles because it's saying, okay, negative 30 is this way. If I just put it in as 30, it goes the other way. I really want that to be negative 30. What you'll find is you're constraining items. A lot of times you don't know which way Inventor is going to want to go. There's not really a set way. Inventor tries to think of it in some kind of logical algorithm. But I found personally that it's really hard to nail down what inventor's thinking. 90% of the time I'll hit it, but still 10% of the time I'll think it's going one direction and it'll go the other. Don't freak out. Don't undo. Just go in there and reverse the number in your constraint. So if I was to constrain this and it went the other way, I wouldn't undo. I'd just say, okay, accept it. Come in here, click on it, and put in my new measurement and be done with it. Sometimes it won't give it to you if it won't. You can always just double click on it there. Make sure you double click on the icon. It'll give you the measurement. So now we can go in there and modify it. You can also suppress these. If you just want to temporarily turn it off. Hey, wait a minute. I need to move this around for just a minute. I can right click and suppress it. I can right click and unsuppress it and it'll take it back to where it should have been. I can right click and I can come in here, say modify, it'll give me the measurement. Right click, say edit, and it'll actually let me reselect. I could also change that around if I wanted to. Basically, I'd selected the wrong face. Once again, you don't have to cancel out. You can just edit it. One of the biggest things with AutoCAD for anybody who learned how to hand draw was they wanted to undo everything. They wanted to start over. They'd freak out. So I would always tell them, no, we can modify that. We can handle that. With Inventor, it's even 10 times more that way. We want to be able to modify what we've done. We don't necessarily want to undo and start over again. So try to make sure that you just keep going. You can edit it, keep moving. Don't freak out. They're easy to edit. It's not the end of the world. You can go in there and move them around. You can rotate them. You do have these options to come up here and rotate a component and move a component. And then you can also do grip snaps, which allows it to come in here and grabs things and snaps them together for you, which basically is the assembly constraint. I want you to practice editing these. There's no right or wrong answer, so I'm not going to tell you you have to do it a certain way or another. Get used to modifying it. You will be doing this a lot. Don't freak out. It's not the end of the world if you have to edit a constraint. Get used to it and get a lot of practice at that. As we get doing real world stuff, you're going to see this a lot. Have fun. See what you can do. Don't tear anything up. Don't get mad. Get a cup of coffee if you get frustrated. Come back. It's not the end of the world if something goes wrong when you're constraining. I'm telling you that now because it gets very frustrating. Even me as an expert who's been doing it for years and years, 
I get frustrated when stuff doesn't work right, I know. But biggest thing I can tell you is editing is there and it's easy to use. So play with it and try and see what you can do with it before you throw your monitor across the room or anything crazy like that.